So don't think that this is some special gift that you have to have in order to be successful at this. We're looking at leadership qualities, apt to teach, being able to teach. Spend some time with Jesus. He'll help you. Spend some time out soul winning. That will help you in and of itself. And again, the skills that you can learn of figuring out how to teach things to people can be applied in many other areas. Focus in on the one. You say, I'm not very good at explaining things to people. Go out soul winning and just get really good at figuring out how to teach people how to be saved. Because when you go out and preach the gospel, there are many ways that you can help people to understand. And you're going to be even a more effective soul winner the more ways you can figure out how to get that understanding across to people. Now, we dead sure use the Bible when we're out preaching the gospel to people because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that it's God's word. It's the incorruptible seed that's going to bring forth that new life. You have to use God's word. God's word ultimately is going to pierce through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's where the power is. But at the same time, you still need to have somebody to help to give the understanding of God's word in conjunction with God's word. People don't just get saved by reading the Bible on their own. I mean, that's evidenced in Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading God's word and specifically reading a passage that had to do with Jesus Christ being sacrificed and he had no idea what he was talking about because the natural man receiveth not the things of God. You need to have someone there to help teach you. And that's where the soul winner comes in. That's where the human instrument comes in that God has committed unto us, the ministry of reconciliation, so we can reconcile people unto God through Jesus Christ. So we have to go out and explain to people. And the concepts are very simple. But when you, when you become apt to teach, you're taking something that, that's either you know, complicated or even not that difficult and just making it so that that person can understand what you're saying. This is the reason why we use examples and analogies and illustrations when we give the gospel to people. We, we read God's word. And if you're a good soul, what you'll be doing is saying, Okay, you know, we start off in Romans 3.23, typically. I mean, you can start off in other places. I usually start off by soul winning in Romans 3.23. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right off the bat, when you're trying to instruct someone and teach someone and help them understand, one of the first things I'll say is, well, do you know what a sin is? Because many people don't even know what sin is. I mean, I can look at that verse, or you can look at that verse and be like, yeah, that's simple. There's no teaching needed there. It's, it's, it's just, how do you not understand that? But a good teacher is going to make sure that that person understands. And maybe that person does understand it. But your job is to make sure they understand it. And then if they don't, to be able to teach them. Many times I come to people, especially people who maybe don't know English very well. You know, they could speak English, but they don't know it very good. Or younger kids, never been to church. I don't know what a, I have no idea what a sin is. And you have to explain, well... Have you ever heard of any God's laws? What do you think God doesn't want us to do? And then they'll say, you know, lying or stealing or killing or whatever, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what a sin is. It's when we're breaking God's rules and you start going through and teaching at that level. Break it down. We use an example of a gift. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, a very, a, a very straightforward verse but you need to be able to break that down and teach it and say, well, you know, that says gift there and try to help the person understand what a gift is. Now, we all know, everyone knows what a gift is, but the application needs to be made where, it, where it's applicable with, with salvation. So what, what are the, some of the properties of a gift? It's free. It's free of charge. Otherwise, it's not a gift. You know, if you have to pay for it, it's not a gift. It, it's given by someone and but you have to accept it in order for it to be yours right there's all these different th different aspects that we point out and just make sure that we're clear in order to teach somebody oh i get the concept now i understand eternal life is just it's just given to me god already bought it and paid for it it's done it, it's bought in full i just have to accept it i just have to receive it and that's what we're trying to get across to people that's the teaching and we use different ways to help somebody understand. 
And if you're going to be a good leader, you need to be a good teacher. You need to be able to un instruct people and break things down at a level that they could understand. And it's not even that it's, it's, it's a lower level. It's just some people just think differently. And there's different people out there. And that's why everybody needs to be out soul winning. It's funny, you know, <laughs> my wife and I, we've been married for over 10 years. And we think about things very, very differently. Very different. I mean, we talk to each other. And if there's a problem at home, just some l random thing, doesn't matter, you know, just some insignificant thing. Or we're talking about changing something in the house, whatever it is. If she gives her explanation of how we should do something, we, you know, we talk about something, we discuss it, try to come up with a plan. I have no idea what she's talking about and vice versa. And we could be talking to her and it's like, I don't know what you mean. And it's like, we have to like draw pictures and stuff to be like, oh, this is what I'm talking about. And, and, and really try to, you know, because our, our communication, just because we're, we, we think really differently about stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody thinks differently and you've got different types of personalities. Some people are very analytical minded. Some people are, are more, you know, creative and abstract thinking. Whatever, God, praise God for making us all different and unique. And there's not always, there's not only one way usually to skin a cat, right? There's many ways of doing things and they could all be uh, correct. But in any case, we, you know, again, I'm digressing a little bit. In order to teach, we need to make sure that we're not ignorant. You spend time with Jesus spiritually, he's going to help you to become uh, apt to teach and, and gain more knowledge and understanding in order to teach well, you, you know, as I was give, you know, explaining before, we need knowledge and wisdom. We need to have a good understanding. Knowledge is when you know something. You know it really well. Uh, and wisdom is being able to apply that knowledge and having the, the full understanding.